Welcome Facebook and YouTube viewers to Mount Zion Lutheran Church for our worship service on this sunny winter day, February 21st, 2021. We'll begin the service now. Let us pause and confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be forgiven. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. And now by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading for this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, we've, uh, we've begun another Lent with our Ash Wednesday service just a few days ago, which marked the first day of our 40-day journey towards Easter. How are you feeling about it so far? Even though Lent is one of the oldest of the church seasons dating back to the third century, we don't really embrace it as much as other church seasons. As I heard one pastor say, we have more names for the day before Ash Wednesday than we do for the 40 days of Lent. I thought about it and said, yeah, that's really true. You know, if you live around here or you've visited anybody here around Ash Wednesday, you've probably heard them talk about Fastnacht Day, which translates to fasting night. I was watching the news late Tuesday night and one local CBS news anchor confessed on air that he did not eat any Fastnachts this year. And the other anchor replied, I'm sure you ate something with fat in it. Fat in it. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. And a little snarky. And that's why some Christians around the world, world called the day before Ash Wednesday Fat Tuesday. Way back in 601, a little bit of trivia here today, Pope Gregory prohibited Christians from eating all forms of meat and animal products during Lent. Thanks a lot, Greg. <laughs> so the Tuesday before Lent drove people to prepare food they might not be able to eat during their Lenten fast, like donuts and pancakes. Yes, you heard me, pancakes. In the United Kingdom, the day before Ash Wednesday is Pancake Day. 
where Christians make pancakes to use up their supply of eggs and milk and butter, symbolic of that banned food in Lent. And they celebrate Pancake Day with games and races, and they toss pancakes in the air. I could get on with that. Now, how can Lent compete with donuts, pancakes, and other celebrations like Mardi Gras? I thought I had found the answer to my question when I stumbled across an online article entitled, listen clearly, Fun Facts About Lent. It was published by the Archdiocese of Miami. I thought, here we go, here we go. I'll finally find something uplifting about Lent. Not, here's a part of what the author wrote on Fun Facts. In church history, those guilty of public scandals like murder or adultery were temporarily expelled for the entire season of Lent in imitation of God's expulsion of Adam and Eve. They were sent away with these words, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. They lived isolated from families, friends, and parishioners for the entire 40 days of Lent. This temporary separation gave us the word quarantine, whose root is Latin for the number 40. Hmm. Are we having fun yet? There weren't really any fun facts. Let's face it. Lent has no nicknames, unique celebrations, or food specialties that I know of. Even Hallmark does not make Happy Lent cards. I checked. And that's because the church teaches us that Lent is a penitential or solemn time. And even if we do not fast from food during Lent, it's a discipline of Lent, not a requirement, our church worship fasts our senses. At Mount Zion, if we were worshiping inside, uh, we would follow the German tradition, it goes way back to before 900 AD, of veiling our crosses with a lightweight purple cloth. And it's called a hunger tuck, which in German literally means hunger cloth. And when we do that, we fast our sight of the cross. Our hymns sung during worship are a bit more subdued as we fast our singing and hearing of music. And we fast from speaking or singing the Alleluia until Easter Sunday. So we deprive our senses during Lent, hoping it helps us maintain our focus on who we are as God's people rather than all those external things. No wonder a person asked online, is there a cheat day associated with Lent? <laughs> I don't think I can say that without laughing. And no, the church does not officially promote the concept of cheat days. <laughs> However, you should know that when counting the 40 days of Lent, we do omit the six Sundays. They're not counted in there. There's actually 46 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter. And we don't count Sundays because it's always a celebration of Christ's resurrection. So Sunday is a loophole. The bottom line is that sometimes it's really hard to see that there is a purpose to our Lenten journey in this sacred season of reflection and repentance of spiritual disciplines and renewal in this wilderness. But the wilderness, like it or not, is where we live our lives. It's where we face all manner of adversity, temptation, and resistance. And what does that wilderness look like? Well, it's different for each person. It can be a somber time, especially as we go through this pandemic or attempt to live through a dangerous winter storm in Texas. For others, the wilderness is simply the place between certainty and doubt, between hope and fear, 
between promises made and promises kept. The wilderness is all around those who lack the basic necessities of life, who go hungry or live in fear, whose grieving is unceasing, and whose isolation is unbearable. Unfortunately, as God's children, we have much to draw upon. Like Jesus, our wilderness is most, will most likely include temptations that press us to manipulate the world into the form that we want our will, like searching for Lenten loopholes, rather than which God intends. And since Jesus' temptation was about being faithful to the will of God, we are invited during Lent to consider the times we were tempted to be unfaithful to God and perhaps make steps to change that. But there's also good news in the wilderness. We can also learn from Jesus today how to deal with it. Jesus got through the wilderness by keeping himself connected to God. And we can do the same through the power of reading scripture, prayer, being strengthened today by receiving Holy Communion, through regular self-examination and confession, and through repenting of our sin and accepting God's forgiveness and leading renewed lives. The gospel reminds us today that the wilderness is not just an obstacle to be overcome, but an opportunity to grow in our discipleship. And there's help. As the angels waited on Jesus in his wilderness experience, we are sustained by the Holy Spirit. We can also depend on each other, and perhaps some angels too, when we are faced with temptation and the power of death that is real and active in our lives. Now, we may have begun Lent on Ash Wednesday with a cross of ashes on our forehead, a symbol of death, but the cross is also a sign of hope and new life that we will soon celebrate on Easter. By Jesus' death and resurrection, he is our strength for this Lenten journey, and yes, Jesus is also the reason for this season. Amen. We continue with a hymn. If you have a blue hymn on your car, it's number 660. I want, you, I want Jesus to walk with me. If you're online, I'm sure you can Google I want Jesus to walk with me and find the verses. It's in your printed bulletin. And we're going to sing all three verses. continue our service with the prayers of the people. 
Distressed by injustice and violence, we pray for leaders who govern in our nation and around the world that they strive for equality and unity in all things. Receive our prayers, O sovereign God. In you, we put our trust. Alert to the difficulties of wintertime, we pray for all who are cold, for all the homeless, for those without power, food, or water, and for all who endure brutal weather, especially those suffering in Texas. Surround them with a community of concern. Receive our prayers, O warm-hearted God. In you, we put our trust. Pained by the suffering of others, we pray for all who are sick, especially those who we now name aloud are in our hearts. We pray for all who have contracted COVID-19 and for those suffering is known only to you. Give health and wholeness to all who suffer. Receive our prayers, O benevolent God. In you, we put our trust. We praise you for the Christians who have gone before us, who witness to you. Give us the faith that at the end, your rainbow will bring endless beauty to all things. Receive our prayers, O splendid God. In you, we put our trust. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now God bless you, that you may be a blessing to others. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Our last song for our service this morning is, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. You'll find it in your green hymnal in uh, number 229. I'm sure you can find it online, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. It's in your bulletin, and we'll sing all four verses.
Thanks for worshiping with us this morning. Now go in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God.